In this experiment, we will calculate the value of acceleration due to gravity on the surface of Earth. To do so, we will first record the position of an object in free fall every 1 60th of a second. Then, we will calculate the average velocity between 15 successive positions by measuring the distance between the points and dividing by the elapsed time, which we've already established is 1 60th of a second. Finally, we will graph the object's velocity versus elapsed time. The slope of this graph will give us the value of the object's acceleration. Let's begin, shall we? The apparatus we'll be using today is a tall stand upon which we've mounted a ticker tape. The ticker tape is made such that each time a small force is applied, it leaves a mark on it. We have a conducting wire suspended from the top to the bottom which is connected to this sparking device here, which sends an electric pulse through it every 1 60th of a second. Note this object hanging. This is an electromagnet. When we turn off the electricity, it ceases to be a magnet and it drops. If we coordinate our efforts just so, we can spark the tape while the magnet is dropping. The this electric pulses will cause the magnet to strike the tape and record its position in free fall every 60th of a second. Now let me demonstrate how this works. So here's what you do. Start the sparking and then release. Once you have your tape, circle every position point on it. After you do that, choose 15 sequential points that are logical. Make sure the distance between each point is increasing at a steady pace. For example, these 15 points are logical. This tape is an indication of where data points are perhaps missing, you, as indicated by the red arrows. You can see that the, the gap here just doesn't make sense in the sequence of events. Once you've selected your 15 points, you're going to measure the average velocity between each interval. This is a simple calculation. Velocity is defined as change in position over change in time. So all you will do is measure the distance between them and divide by that time interval which as we've established is 1 60th of a second. You will do this for 15 consecutive points and arrive at 14 values for velocity. Next we'll use our data to calculate the value of acceleration due to gravity. To accomplish this we will create a graph. On our graph we will plot elapsed time on the x-axis and velocity on the y-axis. Once we have created our axes, we can now plot our data. Chances are the data points will not fall on a straight line. Some will likely be above and some will be below. However, we will draw a trend line, which is a straight line demonstrating the general trend in our data points. We want to create a trend line that has an equal amount of data points above as below. It should look something like this. Now we are ready to calculate the acceleration due to gravity. We will take the slope of our trend line. Most of you probably know that a slope represents the rise over the run. The rise is the y-axis upon which we have plotted velocity. The run is the x-axis where we have plotted the elapsed time. This means that our slope is a representation of change in velocity over change in time, which is the definition of acceleration. Acceleration equals delta v over delta t. Since the acceleration in our experiment is due to gravity alone, the value of our slope should give us the value of the acceleration due to gravity, approximately 980 centimeters per second squared.